Hi everyone. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use Python to process lots of data on the cloud uh, using Dask, a library for parallel computing, and Coiled, a library that allows you to run Dask easily on the cloud. Uh, this is gonna be useful for you if you have lots of data, if you've got some code you wanna run on that data, and if you have cloud credentials. If you don't have all of those things, you should go look somewhere else. Uh, our goal is going to be to reproduce this image on the right. Uh, which shows how matplotlib, a plotting library you've probably used, uh, has grown in usage over time. Uh, in particular, we're gonna process through uh, scholarly articles, scientific journal articles, as that, that have been stored on archive. I'm actually not gonna go too much into the application here. If you wanna learn more, there's a GitHub repository that goes th through, uh, through it with a fully worked notebook you can play with. Today we're gonna focus more on sort of the infrastructure you need in order to set up that kind of problem. So this data is sitting on uh, Amazon S3. So Amazon Archive has pushed all their data up to Amazon, and it's around and it's stored in these these sort of janky tar files, each of which stores a directory of PDFs, each of which has some arcane file format, file name. I don't want to get it too much into it, but regardless, on the cloud, so on Amazon S3, we've got uh, three terabytes of data. So I'm sort of looking at the disk utilization of this, and I'm saying it's about three terabytes, a little bit less. And that data is split up into 5,000 different directories. Now, I've written some really janky Python code that reads in one of those directories, opens up one of those tar files, and then sort of checks each file in that tar file to see if matplotlib is in that file anywhere. Uh, don't need to go too much into it. What's, what's interesting is that when I run it on one of these 5,000 directories, I get some results, they're useful results, and it takes about a minute. Now, I'm running this on my, my Mac Mini here, and it takes about a minute. I've got 5,000 of these things. That's 5,000 minutes. If you do a little math, it's about 100 hours, uh, or about four days of continuous compute time. Most of that's just downloading things. Uh, but we can make this faster with parallel computing by running this lots of times, and also by moving our computation closer to where the data is. It's also cheaper that way, too. Um, I don't have to pay for any data egress costs. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, get some cloud resources and run all of this in parallel, not in 100 hours, but in more like five minutes. That's the goal. Um, so again, I've got some data up here at the top. I've got some JK Python code that I've written. I wanna run on that data on each of those 5,000 directories. And also importantly, I have some cloud access. Uh, I've asked, you might ask your local university IT group or your company's IT group, and they can probably give you AWS credentials. In this case, I want AWS because my data is on AWS. So it'll be cheaper for me to process there. So again, I've got my three things. I've got lots of data, I've got some Python code, I've got cloud credentials, I'm good to go. I'm gonna use Dask, which will give me some parallel computing tools, and Coiled, which will let me set things up easily. So Dask has lots of different APIs. I can use Dask like how I would use Spark or Pandas with sort of data frame operations. I can use it like I would use NumPy to do you know, big image analysis. But I can also use Dask just to run a Python function lots of times. Dask is really flexible. In particular, what I want, I just want a map operation. I just wanna run this extract function, my janky Python code, on those 5,000 directories in Amazon S3. That's what I want. I could run this here and it would use my computer uh, in parallel, which is nice, but I don't want four cores on my Mac mini, I want a thousand cores on the cloud. And so the other tool I'm gonna need is I'm going to need Coiled, uh, and Coiled will help me set up all of those things on the cloud. I'm gonna ask for 200 workers, I'm gonna want all of my local software to be pushed up onto those workers, and I wanna make sure that I'm running that cluster on the cloud. However, if I run this right now, uh, it's not gonna work because I haven't installed Coiled. My machine here is probably just like your machine. I've installed a blank conda environment, and I've got Jupyter. I had to install S3FS, the library to help manage S3 files, and I have installed Python, and that's it. So I'm gonna go through, we're gonna go through together, and we're gonna see what it takes to, to run all these things. So I need to set up cloud infrastructure. I'm gonna go to cloud.coil.io. It's actually gonna tell me what I need to do right here. I'm gonna need to conda install. I'll do coil login and coil set up AWS. Go and look here. So I could do conda install, conda install, dash c, conda forge. I'm actually using Mamba. I like it a little bit more, so I'm gonna use Mamba instead. Um, and I'm gonna get coiled, I'm gonna get dask. I want, there's a nice uh, dask lab extension, which I like. It makes my sort of Jupyter experience a bit better. 
I'm also going to want matplotlib because at the end of this, I need to make a plot. So we're going to start installing some things. Uh, Mambo is super fast. Hopefully this takes a little bit less than a minute. Yes, I do want to install all those things. So it's downloading some files. And we're good. Cool. Next step, I need to do coiled login. So this is connecting my computer to coiled so that I can um, so I can get access. And so I'll need to sign up for coiled. It's super easy. I'm going to hit GitHub authentication. I'm in. Great. Now it's asking me to go to my profile and get a token. I'm going to create an API token. I don't really care what it is. I'm going to have it expire in one day just so you all can't use this. Um, and there we go. So this is my token. And this is, again, just giving my computer enough information so that it can talk to Coil and Coil trusts it. The next step is I want to set up uh, my Coil account to talk to AWS. So the way Coil runs is that it's actually running inside of my AWS environment. Uh, I get, because I have cloud credentials, I can create lots of instances to run things, uh, to run Dask instances in the cloud. But I honestly don't know how to use AWS that well. I don't really know how to like click all of the buttons in AWS to set things up properly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter a bunch of times here. And Coil is going to configure my AWS account and give itself sufficient permissions to set up instances and logs and networking things and all, all the other junk that you need to run AWS well. I'm going to hit enter here because I trust Coiled well enough. You might want to actually read what, what it's doing. Um, but there we go. I've now given Coiled sufficient access to act on my behalf inside of my AWS account. Uh, I like this a lot because I know, I know that things are being run in a mature way. Uh, but again, you should look at the things that are running there and make sure that you're comfortable with giving Coiled this access. Uh, and then I'm good. I'm good to go. Um, I could just start running this, but I'm actually, remember I installed that nice Jupyter plugin. So I'm actually going to close down Jupyter and restart it. And hopefully I'll have a new Dask uh, little extension point here. It should be super fun. Oh yeah, there it is. Cool. So let's open up. I was in quick start and my notebook. Here's where we were before. Excellent. So yeah, so again, refresh notebook. I'm going to need S3 again and all those directories. I'm going to need my Python function again. Good to go. And I'm going to need to set up a coil cluster. So again, I'm working from my laptop. And my laptop is connecting to Coiled. And it's authenticated because of that first step we did, Coiled login. Then Coiled is talking to my AWS account. And it's asking my AWS account to set up 200 uh, Dask workers and one Dask scheduler and all the necessary networking that needs to be there uh, in order so that I can connect to those instances from my laptop. And that's going to take about a minute or two. Um, it's doing a bunch of work here. It's looking at all my local packages. It's sort of figuring out how to install those on the remote machines. It's provisioning those machines on AWS. So we're, we're asking the cloud to give us 200 to rent briefly. 200 machines. We've done that. AWS has now rented us 39, 189. It's giving us some of these machines as it's getting finding them. And now those machines are coming up. They are now turning on. They're installing Ubuntu or whatever operating system they're running. Um, and again, in about a minute, everything's going to be finished. We're going to see this going to launch some software environments, and it'll be ready. If I want to, I can go and I can look at more details about what's going on here. I didn't get to see sort of all sorts of information about what's what's going on. Um, so, at this point, I might allow the sort of the system to run a little bit fast. I'll probably speed up time in the, in the recording here. Oh, looks like we're ready to go. Okay, so I've got enough machines. Coil said, "Yeah, you're probably going to be happy." Um, so yeah, let's connect. It took two minutes twenty four seconds. Honestly, that's longer than it usually takes. Maybe it's the first time kind of issue. Um, we had to set up some you know, extra gateway or something like that. So uh, I'm connected my Dask session to my local Dask, my Jupyter session, my local Dask client, by clicking this button up here, which connects to the local scheduler. And let's get some plots. I don't want plot, task stream, I want progress. 
Let's put those over here. Cool. So if you're used to the VAST dashboard, these are really nice plots to help you sort of understand what's going on. And let's let's run it. So I'm gonna run, oh no, let's, um, there we go, small snafu. I, this is literally the first time I've been running this. Uh, so there you go, I've got running this function extract on 5,000 different directories and they're running. I've finished 200 of them so far, I've finished 400 of them so far, I've finished 600 of them so far. This is way faster than it was running on my laptop where it took 40 seconds to run one. This is again, both because I'm running lots of them parallel and because I'm running them closer to the data, right? This function was probably mostly slow because I was downloading that tar file to my machine. When I'm on the cloud, I don't have to download it. It's right there. I'm getting you know, 200, 300, 400 megabytes per second access to S3. So cool. I mean, this is gonna be done in a few minutes, which is actually way better than the 100 hours I was planning before. Uh, the rest of this analysis is actually pretty tame. I'm going to, there's actually, there's one tar file that didn't work for some reason, so I filter it out. I gather the, the results locally, and I'm done at that point. I actually turn off Dask, I turn off Coiled. I actually don't care about, you know, the, like, the costs anymore, for example. It's a good point to bring up. Uh, so this cluster so far has cost sort of 47, these are coiled credits, it's about a CPU hour, so it's been up 47 CPU hours we've run so far. Each one of them costs on AWS about five cents. Uh, coiled doesn't actually start charging until you hit the like 10,000 CPU hour limit. So this is all free for me from a coiled perspective. I still have to pay uh, my cloud provider though. But again, you know, looks like I'm about halfway through 50 CPU hours at around five cents each. That's like a buck, $2.50. It's all right, it's way better than 100, 100 hours I was gonna wait. Like the, my time is worth far more than these 50 CPU hours that I've rented. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna do my little bobble back and forth thing. I'll wait for these last thousand directories to finish. Okay, looks like we're done. Uh, so that took a few minutes, not long. Uh, it cost me 65 CPU hours. I'm gonna stop it from costing me any more. So I'm gathering the data locally from all those remote machines, my local Mac mini. Um, we're gonna wait a couple of seconds as that download occurs. And then once it's done, we're gonna close down the cluster. And so then I'll stop paying money. Um, so this is really what's, what's beautiful about systems like Dask and about Coiled. I can start by just running some Python code realize, ah, actually I need to go to the cloud for a bit. I can do some scalable analysis and I can come back to my local laptop. And I don't have to sort of like move all of my analysis to that remote place. I can interleave cloud computing or scalable computing into my normal flow. And now I'm done. And now I'm in sort of normal Jupiter um, mode where I don't care about the cloud anymore. I've just got some data. And if I did all this correctly, I should get out this plot. Go Python, go. There you go. So that's more or less the plot we had at the beginning. Um, and yeah, I did that all in less than 10 minutes, right? So I, wait, let's just go through that again. At the very beginning of this, I had some Python code I had a bunch of data in the cloud and I had cloud credentials. I had a blank Python environment. Nothing was set up for me. In the time it would have taken me to process, you know, 10 of these directories, 10 of the 5,000, I was able to install software, connect to it, connect that system to my cloud account, which usually has a whole DevOps IT process associated to it, process all of that data, and then get my result out very quickly and hopefully pretty pleasantly. This didn't require a ton of sort of uh, IT infrastructure work. Everything was pretty smooth. Um, and that's it. So hopefully this is useful to you. Um, and again, let's congratulate Matplotlib on having some fantastic work that they've done over the last decade, starting around, that seems like 2012. Yeah, about a decade ago. Uh, we got a great result out in very little time, despite having to process three terabytes of data. So. Thanks everyone for your time. Cheers.